and more in Straight Ahead on WVU News. I'll tell you about a recent hazing scandal that's affecting our university. I'm Laura Procopio, and straight ahead on WVU News, I'll tell you how the West Virginia legislator is responding to the chemical spill. I'm Taylor Eaton, and straight ahead on WVU News, I'll tell you why the warmer weather may cause problems for your storm drains. This episode of WVU News starts right now. Another arrest is made re regarding a hazing incident at WVU. Find out what school officials are doing to ensure that Greek life is safe on campus. I'm Andrew Seeley. And I'm Taylor Eaton. A bill aimed to keep your water safe and free from chemicals is one step closer to becoming law. You're watching WVU News, an award-winning newscast produced by television journalism students at West Virginia University. The WVU fraternity Phi Kappa Psi chapter was kicked off of campus for a hazing violation that occurred in the fall. Recent investigations resulted in another student arrest. WVU campus reporter Ian Moore is here to tell us about how WVU is dealing with this issue. Ian? Thanks, Taylor and Andrew. With 33 active Greek life organizations on campus, rush season is nothing new at WVU, and neither is the problem of hazing that comes with it. Nearly 20% of students are in a fraternity or sorority at WVU. I found out what officials are doing to prevent future hazing and spoke with one student who experienced it firsthand. Some people consider hazing to be a tradition or a rite of passage, but recently at WVU, a student was put in the hospital because of this hazing. Morgantown Police Department has arrested three Phi Kappa Psi members for hazing and battery. WVU student and former hazing victim Arabia Anderson says when she rushed to sorority, the hazing became so violent that she was left with bruises. She hit me like it was I was a baseball bat, like I was baseball. And she swung the paddle like it was a baseball bat. And I remember the first time I got hit by her, I already had bruises. According to a study from Alfred University, 48% of students who belong to a group had been hazed. Hazing that goes too far can lead to death. In fact, according to Bloomberg News, all over the country in fraternity houses like the ones behind me, there have been at least 60 hazing-related deaths since 2005. Interim Director of Student Organizations Bob Campione is taking steps in order to prevent violent hazing from happening on our campus again. I've asked the local police and the university police on their cruising around at night to if they see activities that's going on around any of the houses or things that don't look right in groups and stuff that they let us know. Due to the hazing event, Phi Kappa Psi has been suspended for the next two and a half years. Arabia believes the punishment is necessary since she still suffers from nightmares because of her own hazing experience. It's always going to be with you. Uh, you can't go to certain locations without like having a flashback. A recent study shows that 36% of hazing victims would not report a hazing incident because they feel there is no one to tell. If you are charged with hazing on any college campus in the state, you could be fined $1,000 and serve up to nine months behind bars. Taylor and Andrew, back to you. Thanks, Ian. WVU officials remind students to report suspected hazing to student organization services and local law enforcement. And public schools in West Virginia are taking a stand against violence as well. WVU News education reporter Brandon Height tells us more about school safety. There have been 387 school shootings since 1992, 84 since 2010 alone. This recent issue has left some parents concerned. My son is 13 years old and it's been a worry and as he's gotten older, it it increases. I think our society is exposed to too much violence on TV and it makes it uh, too ordinary for these kids. One way that West Virginia is trying to prevent school violence is through the Prevention Resource Officer Program, which places officers in school buildings during the school day. It uh, puts uh, the officers there in a non-confrontational uh, role uh, to interact with the students and the faculty uh, and provide a resource for uh, the, the students and, and the, the school administrators uh, for anything that comes up uh, from a law enforcement side or uh, criminal justice uh, uh, basis. Out of a class of 25, three students will engage in violence each year. 
The PRO program aims to prevent violence from occurring within school grounds, but with only 68 officers in 29 counties in West Virginia, some parents say that talking to your kids about school violence is a proactive approach. Don't hesitate. Say something right then. If you don't feel safe to say something right then, find an adult immediately. In Morgantown, there are currently only two PRO officers on duty and one school resource officer. Brandon Height, WVU News, Morgantown. Officials in southern West Virginia are still trying to make certain that the water is safe. That's right, Andrew. You may recall the chemical spill in Kanawha County that gained national attention. Legislative reporter Lauren Procopio is in the studio to report on what state lawmakers are doing to ensure something like this never happens again. Thanks, Taylor and Andrew. It's been over a month since Freedom Industries leaked toxic chemicals into the Elk River, contaminating drinking water for thousands of people in the Mountain State. I traveled to Charleston to find out how one bill could prevent a major chemical spill from happening again. Charleston resident Alan Pennington remembers when the news came out about the spill and the extremes people took to find clean, filtered water. One guy said that you should have been here. That there was a fight, a fist fight over water. A state emergency was declared because of the spill and potential health hazards. 300,000 people in southern West Virginia were banned from using their tap water, some for over one week. The average American uses 80 to 100 gallons of water a day. The Freedom Industry spills not only left people unable to drink their water, they couldn't cook, clean, or shower with it for days. Senate is currently processing legislation, and Majority Leader John Unger is protective of West Virginia and its future. Senate Bill 373, which deals with uh, regulating above ground storage facilities to try to close the loophole, also putting in a state water resource management plan and other protections so that we can ensure that what happened here in Charleston won't happen again anywhere in West Virginia. Recently, six schools in Kanawha County had early dismissals because of reported licorice smells in the water. Some West Virginians, like Alan Pennington, only feel safe drinking bottled water. The government has said, well, it's okay to, to even drink, but we don't do it. We don't drink. We don't trust it yet. Freedom Industries is facing multiple lawsuits and has filed for bankruptcy since the chemical spill. Freedom Industries recently announced it will sell its chemicals and shut down completely. The company faces millions of dollars in environmental cleanup costs. Taylor and Andrew, back to you. Thanks, Lauren. We welcome wet, warmer weather, but it's creating flooding problems in the area. I recently visited Star City where the melting snow and ice can cause problems with storm drains. Areas near Morgantown have received almost five feet of snow this winter. And with the weather starting to warm up, the snow and ice are beginning to thaw, causing runoff to become a problem. Kelly Mills says that although she doesn't live in an area affected by flooding, it still worries her that others may have to deal with this issue. I know there's people who live in areas where they have storm drains and it could flood and it, it can really bother them. It can ruin, you know, their things, it can cause more problems with our vehicles and such. Star City stormwater system is between 30 and 50 years old and with so much impervious area, there is nowhere for the water to go. Recent changes now require anyone who wants to build in Star City to get a stormwater permit first. The state has mandated that we do have stormwater ordinances and we've been working on them I think six or seven years now. It's been quite some time, but uh, we have passed our, our ordinance and, and uh, everything's in in line and so that we are uh, up to grade with the state. You can reduce runoff and protect area water systems by not littering, cleaning up animal waste, minimizing salt use, and recycling. Areas currently experiencing flooding problems are being investigated and possible solutions are being engineered. Star City has more tips to help stop and reduce runoff water. You can find these on the website at the bottom of your screen. West Virginia's minimum wage may be on the rise. Legislation for a bill could increase minimum wage by 75 cents. The minimum wage bill awaits Senate consideration. West Virginia's current rate sits at the national average of $7.25. Supporters for the bill claim it will boost the economy and help around 1,000 West Virginians make an extra $3,000 a year. The new bill could take effect January of next year. 
West Virginia's regular legislative session will come to a close in early March. Right when college basketball season is just heating up. Coming up on WVU Sports, Joe Mitchin will tell us about five Mountaineers who are giving their all to their last season at WVU. Straight ahead on WVU Sports, it may be quiet now, but the Mountaineer women's basketball team has rocked the Coliseum all season long. I'm Joe Mitchin, and I'll tell you who is leading the charge. We're all different. Our interests, our backgrounds can influence our futures. But without focus, they're just dreams. But what if someone could give your interests life? If they could give your background power? If they could fuel what motivates you? That's what gives dreams meaning, purpose. And perhaps that was the moment you knew you wanted to be a mountaineer. Tournament season is just around the corner for college basketball. And sports anchor Joe Mission is here to tell us about one team at WVU that's turning heads. Joe. Thanks, Andrew and Taylor. The West Virginia women's basketball team is certainly having a season to remember. The Big 12 championship is nearly here, and the women's team is ranked in the top 15 in the country. I'll tell you how the Mountaineers use veteran leadership to their advantage. The Mountaineers are all smiles. WVU's women's basketball team is soaring up the rankings thanks in large part to a group of five seniors who say that sometimes it takes a veteran to get the team going. It takes maybe one or two of us or even all of us, not even just the seniors, just that one person to step up and say, look, hey ladies, we have to pick it up and we can't come out slow. And I even tell myself I have to be a lot more vocal sometimes. It's a family feel within this program, and they've been through a lot. Not even injuries or a conference change could break apart the ladies' success on and off the court. I've said it all along when they were sophomore juniors also that this is a good group of uh, players that want to win and, and practice hard every day. And, uh, you know, it, it's been no different as a, a senior. Three Mountaineer seniors, Asia Bussey, Crystal Caldwell, and Taylor Palmer have all reached the 1,000 point club in their WVU careers. It's just the second time in program history that this hot shooting feat has been accomplished by multiple players in the same season. As their collegiate careers wind down, the senior members of the team aren't taking anything for granted. I'm going to appreciate it a lot more and realize that like, once we get into tournament time, I'm going to know that every game counts and this could be my last game ever playing. And I'm definitely going to just make sure I go as hard as I can. The Mountaineer seniors will play their final game in the WVU Coliseum on March 4th against Kansas as the race for a Big 12 championship continues. The class of 2014 has 88 victories in their four years and are just eight wins away from becoming the most successful class in West Virginia history. Andrew and Taylor, back to you. It's great to see the women's team work together both on and off the court. And to see former Mountaineers make a difference in local schools. Megu Kalenko has more. Yeah! Yeah! WVU's Public Relations Student Society of America and the United Way are banding together to inspire local children to be great and teach them the importance of positive role models. And who better to do just that than some of their biggest idols? Former NFL player and WVU alumni Quincy Wilson and NFL free agent J.D. Woods were in Morgantown to promote the day of play for kids. It's huge. You know, a lot of, a lot of parents work a lot, so a lot, so a lot of these kids have a lot of free time. So if you don't have positive people in your life or positive people that you look up to, you can kind of stray away from, you know, and get into bad stuff. For five kids don't have someone positive to look up to, but luckily there are many ways you can help a child take a step in the right direction. Right guys? Yeah! Maggie Kalenko, WVU News, Morgantown. The Mountaineer community is really giving back to the Morgantown youth. And it's nice to see former WVU football stars serve as positive role models for them. Well, that wraps up, wraps up this week's edition of WVU News. Be sure to visit us online at our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube. And don't forget to follow us and our reporters on Twitter. Thanks for watching WVU News. We'll see you next time.